Engine Company Operations Reverse Lay. This video will outline the reverse hose lay for Engineer Candidate Certification, or ECC. Prior to beginning the operation, the candidate will have an opportunity to pre-trip the engine. Once ready to begin the reverse lay operation, the rater will describe the objective to the candidate. The candidate must ensure they are wearing the proper PPE, not wearing a helmet in the cab. Check for crew and apparatus security, ensure everyone is seated and seat belted in the cab, and that all compartment doors are closed prior to moving. Turn on all emergency lights, including headlights. Once the spring brake is released, check the door and seatbelt warning lights. Spot the apparatus as directed by the radar, as close as possible to the incident on the hydrant side of the street if possible. Keep brakes applied to prevent apparatus from rolling while equipment is being removed. Parking brake may be set, but must be released before laying the line. Any movement while equipment is being removed is a safety violation. Wait until properly signaled to lay away from the hydrant. Watch the signal through the driver's side mirror and listen for verbal signal to take it away. Ensure all remaining personnel are seated with seatbelt fastened. Sound forward motion signal, drive safely and correctly while laying hose six to eight feet away from the curb. A single horn blast signals forward motion prior to moving. Drive safely and correctly while laying hose six to eight feet away from the curb. Hose should be laid six to eight feet from the curb on the side of the road that the hydrant is located. Cross hose over the incident or other side of the road only in front of the incident location. Spot apparatus at hydrant. Set both parking brake and front brake. Time starts. Place road transmission into neutral. This must be done before engaging the pump. Shift pump selector from road to pump. Look for pump engage indicator light to illuminate. Shift transmission from neutral to drive. Listen for audible indicators signifying that the pump is engaged. Check that both the pump engaged and OK to pump green indicator lights are on. This indicates ready to pump. Exit cab, ensure to take helmet, portable radio, and other PPE. Ensure tank to pump valve is open. At the engineer's panel, check that the green light on the pump panel is on and ready to pump. Open radio door and turn volume up to an audible level. Place wheel blocks on left rear tires. Collapsible wheel blocks locked open in place prior to throttling up. Place forward and aft of wheel. Wheel blocks in complete alignment with tire and square to the tread. Do not supply water via apparatus water tank. Obtain hydrant spanner and appropriate length four inch suction hose to connect to hydrant. Make connection at apparatus. This will be your first connection. Make connection at hydrant. This is your second connection. Charge supply suction line. Bleed air from supply suction line. Close bleeder valve when air is removed. Open four inch intake slowly and completely. Green light will indicate valve is fully open. Close the tank to pump valve. Note the intake static pressure on the suction gauge. Break four inch line, place coupling under tailboard. Make connections away from the apparatus pump panel and spanner tight. Pulling insufficient hose or pulling incorrect hose to reach pump discharge is an error. Do not pull hose from the incident scene to make up for any shortage to connect to the pump. Do not connect hose to incorrect pump discharge. Verbally and visually check for personnel readiness and signal for water. Return signal properly. Open the correct discharge valve slowly and completely. Deliver correct calculated pump pressure for hose lay. 
Pump pressure under or over 15 PSI of correct pressure is unacceptable. Use the discharge gauge to determine the correct pressure reading because of possible differences between the main gauges and the discharge gauges. Confirm correct pressure and water flow with personnel on hand line. Utilize radio, voice, or hand signals to verify pressure with personnel on the lines. Correctly set discharge pressure relief valve. Calculated pressure is below 150 PSI. Adjust relief valve counterclockwise until pressure drops on the discharge gauge and amber light comes on indicating the relief valve is open. Listen for bypassing water. Gradually turn the relief valve clockwise until the discharge gauge needle is steady at desired discharge pressure and amber light goes off indicating the relief valve is closed and set. If the calculated pressure is above 150 PSI, Adjust the relief valve clockwise to raise pressure above calculated discharge pressure. Deliver correct pump pressure. Turn the relief valve counterclockwise until pressure drops to the discharge gauge and amber light comes on indicating the relief valve is open. Listen for bypassing water. Gradually turn the relief valve clockwise until the discharge gauge needle is steady at the desired discharge pressure and amber light goes off indicating the relief valve is closed and set. Open recirculation line for pump cooling. Note the residual pressure on the suction gauge. Determine number of like lines that can be delivered. Monitor water levels in tank and fill tank if necessary. This may be done visually or by indicator lights. Ensure the tank is full. Continue with operation after opening tank fill valve. Compensate by increasing throttle for an additional discharge, the tank fill, being opened. Shut down when full and compensate by reducing throttle for a discharge, tank fill being shut down. Monitor all engineer panel gauges. Touch and verbalize each gauge, such as RPM, oil pressure, engine water temp, etc. Open the engine cooler valve to provide more engine cooling only if the engine overheats. Check pump for overheating. Visualize overheat indicator light. If cooling becomes necessary, open the tank fill to recirculate water in the pump and adjust pump pressure if necessary. In extended pumping operations, this is an ongoing check. High pump water temperature may lead to cavitation. Check pump for signs of cavitation. Listen for sounds like gravel circulating in the pump. When detected, reduce discharge flow by gating down, reduce engine RPM, Prime the pump to remove accumulated air and steam. Close all doors and secure loose equipment. Remove all kinks from hose lines. Tighten leaking couplings. Visually check under apparatus for fluid leaks and other signs of failure. Notify radar that the evolution is complete by clearly calling time. Reverse hose lay shutdown procedures. Confirm with the radar on shutdown of operation. Check verbally and visually, utilize radio if necessary. Verbally and visually inform the firefighter on the hose line of shutdown. Utilize radio, voice, or hand signals. Signal properly for shutdown, pick up. Place arms away from body on sides, then swing arms across the body in front, repeat until acknowledged. Throttle down to idle slowly before closing the discharge valve and disengaging the pump. Close discharge valve. Do not continue to next step with this valve open. Check water levels, refill if necessary. Physically look in tank on top of apparatus or for water discharging from overflow on the tires. Do not rely solely on panel lights or gauges. Open tank to pump valve. Close intake valve. Have hydrant shut down and secured. Bleed water pressure from line. Reset discharge pressure relief valve using approved method. This can be done using tank to pump valve as a water source and tank fill valve as a discharge. Close open valve, tank to pump, tank fill. Must be done before entering the cab to shut down. Close recirculation valve. Shift transmission to neutral. Should be done early in shutdown procedure, particularly if water has been shut off. Do not allow pump to run hot or dry. Wait for five seconds to allow the transmission to wind down. Grinding of gears will occur if not done correctly. Do not let the gears grind. 
Shift pump from pump to road. Turn off all emergency lights if safe to do so. Shut down engine if safe to do so. Turn on four-way flashers. Relieve pressure on the pump. This can be done using tank fill or open a discharge intake valve and corresponding bleeder valve. Secure all equipment and the apparatus, nozzles, hose, compartment doors, etc. All equipment should be returned to the same compartment where it was originally found. Perform safety walk around. Verify all previous steps are completed and perform any that were missed. Wheel blocks must be securely stowed before entering cab. Notify the raider that the apparatus is road ready except for picking up the wheel blocks and leaving the four-way flashers on.